Don't you prophesy like that to me. Stone him with stones. The commandment went out from the king. And they killed Zechariah. Now I tell you this story. Not that you just may know about that. But that you can maybe learn from the life of Joash. Did he have an easy start maybe? Not necessarily so easy. But he was one. But was he protected of God? In the early years of his life? Did he serve God the earlier years of his life? What does God say? God sums his whole life up. God sums his whole life up in chapter 24, verse 2. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. You know what? God sometimes sums up a man's life. He said, for the most part, Joash did what was right. How can a man that started off wanting to do right, wanting to serve God, how could he end up in such a miserable, wicked position? Could that happen to you? I mean, if it happened to Joash, is it a concern that it might happen to us, or to me? Maybe we could look and see what happened in Joash's life that that took this effect later on and he ended up in such misery. I, when I consider the great men of God that have lived lives that are recorded in the Bible, I think to myself, oh Lord, help me not to fall. Hold me up, Lord. Protect me. Don't let me fall in the same traps. I want to find out what traps did Satan lay in his life so I can avoid it. Do you want to avoid some of those traps? It goes back to 2 Kings, verse 3. 2 Kings, verse 3. Verse 2, it says, Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days when Jehoiakim, Jehoiada, I'm sorry, the priest, instructed him. But the high places were not taken away. Can you examine your heart today and say, well, do you have some high places in your heart, in your life? Is there a high place that is not... What's a high place? A place that is not surrendered to the will of God. Is there, a, is there a spot in your heart that God's will does not reign? That's a danger. You know what? One of the things that... Uh, We think about when we, we know we have these high places. We know we have a place that's like, yeah, I know I should do this differently. I know I, I, I know I should read my Bible every day. Yeah, I know I know I should pray, but I don't. The Bible's the Bible says, For him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Mm -hmm. If God's tugging at your heart and telling you to do some good things, and you're not, you're kind of pushing off, delaying it. That could be a high place. There's some, there might be some uh, entertainment that you enjoy. Yeah, but I really like this. I, I don't. Look, I try not to look at the bad stuff about this, but uh, this is the entertainment I like, and, and I like to do this. But can it be a, just a little high place in your life? These high places sit there. They fester. They grow. What about uh, your thoughts? Are there some high places in your thoughts that you need to give the Lord? The thought comes in your mind, every thought should be in the cap bring, bring into the captivity of who? Jesus Christ. All right? Bring every thought to captivity of Him. You might have a thought that shouldn't belong there and say, Lord, I give this to you. Please take it away. Don't tell me. <laughs> well, hey, look. Yeah, I'm, nobody's perfect. This is the response of some Christians. Hey, look, nobody's perfect. Get off my back. Look what I do. I, I witness. I, I've worked on the house of God. I, I, uh, I give money to the church. Yeah, so I've got this one little high place in my life. These high places were the downfall of Joash. Jesus says the little foxes are what spoil the vine. And I think it's in, in Ecclesiastes. The little foxes spoil the vine. It's the little things in your life. Well, how do you look at this from a New Testament perspective? 
in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. I'll show it to you in a, uh, in a, different, in a different light. Same principle. Galatians chapter 6. In verse 3, Galatians chapter 6, verse 3, If any man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. The rest of us aren't fooled. You can see somebody that's got some high... Have you ever seen somebody that's got a high place in their life? Yeah, you can see it. You can see it. <coughs> and he's deceiving himself, but let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. Let every man... And it, well, verse 7. I want you to go down to verse 7. Be not deceived. Don't deceive yourself. Who is the one that deceives himself? Going back up to verse 3. He that thinks himself to be something, when he's really nothing. He's deceiving himself. Be not deceived in verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked or made fun of. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whatever you sow, you will reap. If you're going to sow good, you'll reap good. But if you're going to sow good and bad, you're going to be reaping good and bad. Um, whatever you sow, you will reap. You're deceiving yourself if you think that the high places in your life will not hurt you. You need to struggle against those things. You need to work on tearing them down. You see, say, God, give me the strength to tear this high place down one at a time and get them torn down. The high places are what was the downfall of Joash's life. It started leading the people away. The people gathered together and put some pressure on him saying, hey, we want to go back to serve Baal. And he let it happen. And then he ended up even killing the man who had been an instructor his whole life. He killed his son. He killed his son, Zechariah. Do not think that God is turning his back on your high places. You say, well, you know what? God's blessing my life. I know God loves me and God does love you. God loved Joash. God sent prophets into Joash's life to turn him back. Say, get those things out of there. You're not going to prosper. And God was patient and patient and patient. Do not take God's patience with your high places as God saying, hey, it's no big deal. High places, places that are, are out of the will of God in your life, are very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that will end up bringing fruit in your later years and hurting your life. Mm -hmm. The good news is, in this passage in Galatians, it's focusing on, look, if you're sowing what's good and what's right, and in your heart between you and God, say, Lord, I don't want to have any high places in my life. I want them torn down. If you feel like you don't have the strength to do it, just say, Lord, I give you permission to tear these things down mm -hmm. and help me to do it. All right? Because a lot of times, don't think it's up to you. Those high places might be strong towers of Satan. But it, you give God permission to tear them down. Yeah, but, but, but what are other people going to say about me? What's everybody else? What am I, I'm going to lose all my friends. Those high places have to go. And God knows it. And you need, each person might be struggling with a different type of a high place. I want to encourage you to give it to God. One of the things that we saw is in uh, 2 Kings eleven seventeen. it says, Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they should be the Lord's people. Have you made a covenant with the Lord that you want to be his? Amen. I believe that you have. I believe that you're here today because you want to be drawn closer to God. You want to be his people. You want him to be your God. The, the caution I want to give you today and say, Lord, look at my life. In uh, 